a little bonus tip for you this week for how to set perfect dashboard sizes. This came about because um, our boss, Tom Brown, was going out to visit a customer and was asking for some feedback on a dashboard he built. One of the things that we noticed is that he had set the dashboard size to automatic down here on the left-hand side. That's typically something you don't want to do because Tableau will re-render the dashboard based on the size of the screen that you're looking at. So on your computer, you may design a perfectly uh, a dashboard that looks perfect based on the size of your, of your computer. But then if somebody looks at it on a mobile phone and you have the dashboard size set to automatic, it won't look the same. Tableau will scrunch it down into that tiny screen size. So what I'm going to do today is show you how to um, set the perfect dashboard size. And this was a tip that I learned uh, during the train the trainer training that I did with Molly Monsi at Tableau. So let's get started. To start off, what I want to do is I'm going to connect to the uh, Transport for London Bike Points API that was created by James Dunkerley. So I'm going to just copy this link here. And then inside Tableau, I'm going to go ahead and connect to data and choose Web Data Connector. Paste that in. And then just simply click on the Submit to Tableau button. So from here, what this is going to do is it's going to go out and uh, Tableau is going to call that API and download all of the information from the Transport for London Bikes site. Okay, great. So we've got a few things here. Terminal name, I know needs to be dimension. Um, looks like we've got a couple of measures and a couple of dimensions. So let's start by just building something simple. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and drag install date to the columns. And maybe let's look at it by week and look at the number of bikes that have been installed by week. You can see it's got these weird spikes, but really what I'm interested in is the running total. How, how has the number of bikes grown? So I'm going to switch that to a running total. And then maybe I want to compare that to the number of bike docks that are available. So I'm going to drop that on top of the same axis. And that automatically puts measure names on the color shelf and measure value in the row shelf. But I need to make the number of docks a running total as well. Okay, so there we go. So now what I'm going to do, um, I like to actually label the line ends. So I'm going to just go ahead and label the end of the lines. All right, so this is our number of, uh, of docks. This is our number of, um, of bikes. So that's good. You want to see a gap. You want, you want people to have space to park their bikes. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the title here. Always like to do a little bit of formatting. Get rid of the title here. Okay, so let's call this, uh, uh, let's call this uh, bike plan growth, something like that. And uh, it looks like maybe I want to see the most common day that bikes are installed. So again, I'm going to just drag this to the column shelf, and maybe I want to look at weekday, and I want to basically just see the number of bikes. I'm going to change this to a bar chart. And we can see that Friday is the most common day for bikes to be installed. Uh, do I want to look at that by year? Uh, if I drag install date onto the color shelf, you'll see that it looks like most of the bikes have been installed in 2010, um, which, which also jives with our growth over here. We see this big spike here. So it looks like that must have started in 2010. But I'm going to go ahead and sort these bars in descending order so that my most recent year is at the bottom. Okay, this isn't a particularly great chart, uh, but let's, let's not worry about that for now. Um, so this is uh, day of install. And then maybe we want to do, we've got latitude and longitude, so surely we should just look at uh, where the bikes are being installed. So let's go ahead and put the name of the, the install location. It looks like, uh, okay, so the common name looks like the location of where the bike was installed. And then maybe let's also color this by year. So when we highlight, we can see when they were all installed. It looks like in 2013, there was a big push down toward the Southwest. Um, I don't know, maybe that uh, goes along with London's growth. Maybe that became a more populated area. I don't know enough about the history of residency in London, but it looks like there really haven't been many installed in 2014 and 2015. Okay, a lot in 2010. Okay, so let's call this um, bike locations. And then uh, maybe we're satisfied with that and we want to go ahead and throw it on a dashboard. So normally you just click on this new dashboard sheet and you get this nice uh, little section down here. The problem is uh, you can see I've already got a scroll bar on the right. But let's go ahead and start 
playing around with the dashboard. Uh, first, I want to give it a title. I'm going to call this TFL um, bike scheme where uh, are the bikes, something like that. You know, usually you want to give it a decent title. And then um, I'm probably going to go ahead and start by putting my bike map on the upper left because I like that the most. Uh, maybe the growth is over here and possibly the day of install goes. Oh, I want to put it below that, but it's not going to, it doesn't look like it's going to let me. So let me throw a container in here, put that inside the container and put that inside the container. Okay, there we go. So uh, it looks like, uh, so year of install date, I probably want this down here. Maybe I'll put it below the map because it goes with both of these two. And then maybe I'll stick this one next to, uh, it doesn't want to let me do that. So let me put the horizontal container in here, put that in there, and then put that next to it. Okay, there we go. So let me drag this over a little bit. Um, okay, so that doesn't look like a good place for that because of the sizing, the size that I don't have available. So let me just stick this right here. Okay, there we go. Um, I probably would normally, you know, clean this up quite a bit and rename these and stuff, but for for purposes of this demo, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna leave it as is. Okay, so now you see I've got this nice little scroll here, and if I switch this to automatic, you'll see that Tableau fitted in my screen, and if I go into presentation mode, you'll see that Tableau will fill it and fit it in my entire screen. But now uh, maybe you know things feel too squished to me, and if I look at this on a mobile device, um, it'll be even more squished. So I can sort of mimic a mobile device just by making this smaller, and you'll see how Tableau will squish it if you look at it on a mobile device. And that's not really what I'm looking for. So uh, let me switch it back to the default, which is desktop. And this is kind of the, the way it'll look from the beginning. And here's really the key. When you want to set the perfect dashboard size, in general, if you kind of make it fit this space right here, the space that's available for, for your dashboard, like none of the gray stuff and no scrolling, it's going to be pretty good for most people. So the trick is to, down here on the dashboard size, is to set it to, first set it to automatic and then set it to exactly. And you can see now it basically set my width and height to exactly the amount of space I have available. Now when I look at it in presentation mode, it still looks the same and I can design the dashboard to look perfectly uh, for, for my end users. So uh, that's today's tip. Again, the idea is you just switch it from uh, the standard desktop first to automatic and then to exactly. So I hope that helps you and uh, let me know if you have any feedback. Thank you.